What's up guys, it's James. And in today's video, I wanna talk about the top seven biggest nutrition mistakes that I see people make, okay? I'm an online coach. It's literally my job is to help people or stop people from making the mistakes that they're making, which is preventing them from hitting their goals, okay? This is literally what I get paid to do. And nutrition is a big topic, okay? I, if there's one sort of area of like health and fitness that people get wrong the most, it is without a doubt nutrition. Nutrition is where most people mess up the worst. And the reason why I think this is, is because we get a lot of our mainstream nutrition advice is just corrupted, it's biased. It, it all, it, you know, the government's guidelines is just based on big multinational corporations and what's most profitable for them. So the advice that you get from your government and from the mainstream is not what's best for you. It's not what's best for your health. It's actually, you know, what makes the most dollars. And I'll probably make a separate video on this and the food pyramid and all that kind of stuff. I want to, I don't want to get too off track here. We're just going to keep it um, nice and focused. There's seven biggest nutrition mistakes that I see people make. Now, the first few on this list are kind of like more general, like health applied to everyone. And the second half of this list is more kind of fitness related, but maybe I'm a little bit biased, but I think everyone should at least, you know, have some kind of interest in fitness or, you know, do some kind of movement. So technically these should apply to everyone. Okay. Now let's get into it. Number one is probably going to be the most surprising, but I'll tell you a quick story. Okay. So I come from a small town and then I went to university. I went to uh, Manchester to go to university there. It's like a big city. And when I made that move, um, I was drinking the uh, the water there. And I was like, oh, the, the water just tasted just different. It just did, didn't taste nice at all. And I spoke to everyone else who was not from there, who'd kind of like moved from far away or from a small town to come to Manchester. And everyone said, yeah, the, the water just tastes different here. I don't know what it is. And it just tasted like chemicals or it just didn't taste good at all. Now, even at a young age, I kind of just, my intuition told me to just not drink the tap water. So from a very young age, I'm not very young, but as a teenager, I stopped drinking the tap water and I just drank bottled water only. And I don't know how long this, this effect took to happen, but now, like, Whenever I drink tap water, I can immediately tell. Like it got to the point where I could smell water and I could tell you whether it's from the tap or whether it's from like bottled water. Like I could literally smell the chlorine in it. And I don't care where you live in the world. I don't care how good the water supply is. You should not be drinking tap water. That is one of the biggest mistakes people are making is drinking tap water. Now, let's just think about this for a second, okay? The human body is like, what, 60, 70% water, okay? <laughs> like, most of you is water, okay? And some people aren't even drinking water in the first place, can you believe it? But, and the people that are drinking water, some, most of them think it's fine to just drink water from the tap. Like, if you saw the inside of a tap, in fact, you know, after this video, after you've watched this video, Google, what the inside of like tap, like a tap water pipe looks like. <laughs> it is disgusting, it is gross. You'll never drink tap water ever again. So that is one of the biggest mistakes is drinking tap water. Now, like I said before, the human body is like 60, 70% water, okay? Do you not think it's quite important that we should be drinking a high quality water? Like inputs, you, to have good outputs, which is like how you feel and how you're, how you look and your ability to just think clearly and just live a good life comes from the quality of your inputs. In software engineering, we have a term called garbage in, garbage out, okay? Now, if you're putting bad water into your body, you just, you just like, you're not gonna have good outputs, all right? So, high quality water, I don't have any with me right now, but I only drink water from a glass bottle. I don't even drink water from a plastic bottle anymore i only drink water from a glass bottle my personal preference is sparkling that's all i pretty much drink these days is sparkling water but you can just do still water 
but make sure it's from a glass bottle as well if you can afford to do this obviously not everyone can and years ago i wouldn't have been able to afford this either but even now right i can taste the difference between what uh, bottled water which has been stored in plastic and water which has been stored in glass when water has been kept in a plastic bottle it kind of just like leaches through and you can just you can just taste the plastic within the water okay so step a uh, bit biggest mistake number one is drinking tap water i don't care where you live what what country stop doing it okay number two <clears throat> okay um how can i describe this okay so when i was younger uh, i had a lot of health issues okay i had back pain i had uh, chronic back pain 24 7 i had kind of like brain fog um couldn't concentrate depression anxiety i had all these different health issues and i saw many different people all around the country every single one of them told me it was this thing or is that thing and no one could actually help me at all right <clears throat> and then what happened is I was uh, watching a Netflix documentary one evening I was just on my own watching a Netflix documentary about how people had changed their diet and their lifestyle and they'd reversed so-called chronic health conditions and it just dawned on me there and then I was like okay one thing that I haven't paid any attention to at all is the food that I'm putting in my body like what if I'm having all these problems because of the food that I'm eating like we are literally what we eat okay so I was like, oh, okay, I'll look into that. And most people, right, most people, some of you watching this video right now will have food intolerances and you're not even aware of it at all. And it's just like what you can do to cultivate more awareness is uh, meditation. That really helps just becoming more self-aware. But also when you eat food, okay, think like an hour later, how do you feel after that meal? Two hours later or, you know, like six hours later, okay? You need to pay attention. Some people, they get headaches throughout the day or they get this thing or that thing and they're like, oh, oh, I've got a headache again. I'm just going to take some pills or I'm just going to do this thing or that thing. When actually, you know, if you just address the root cause, which is maybe, you know, the water that you're drinking or you're drinking alcohol and you're not drinking enough water or you're eating foods which you're intolerant to, okay? So I would recommend getting a food intolerance test just to make sure uh, if you can't afford that you, you can do uh, an elimination diet you can remove certain foods that people are sensitive to uh, for like 30 days re reintroduce them see how you feel uh, and for some of you it can be absolutely life-changing for me I would not have the life that I have right now had I not fixed uh, my intolerances to gluten and dairy and actually it's getting to a point right now where i can tolerate those foods again so it is possible to kind of fix some of these things i'm working with a coach to be able to do that right now but definitely pay attention to some foods that you're eating that the, you might be intolerant to and it's the kind of like the root cause to a lot of your like pain or inflammation or whatever okay step number three is very simple actually it's just we're not eating real foods like a lot of people are just not eating real foods and if you could kind of like boil nutrition down just simplify it to like its most basic form it's like eat real foods what does that mean well did it grow in the ground did it run on the ground or did it swim in the sea okay or did it fly in the air <laughs> right that's if it's if it's one of those four things then eat it if it was made in a lab don't eat it if it says healthy if it says if on the on the label if it says healthy it's not healthy okay any healthy foods do not need labels in the first place if it's got an ingredients list you probably shouldn't eat it just eat real foods okay real fruits vegetables some carbohydrates um and obviously, uh, you know, animal foods, the animals, fish, eggs, etc., meat, steak, you know, like just eat real foods, okay? You could transform your health simply just by re removing all the processed fake foods that are there and just eating real foods alone. Guarantee some of you that will make a massive difference to how you feel. Okay, that's step number three is not eating real foods. Step number four not eating enough protein okay protein is the building blocks for muscle it's 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 absolutely essential 
we're fine without carbohydrates. Carbohydrates we don't actually need to be able to function. And there's a lot of different arguments whether it's optimal to have carbs or not. I don't want to get into that discussion. That's a discussion for another video. But I would say one of the biggest mistakes that people make is just simply not eating enough protein. You need protein, especially if you're trying to build muscle. If you're trying to improve your body composition at all, you're going to need protein, okay? Protein is absolutely essential. Make sure you're getting protein from like animal sources. I actually did a vegan diet for a while. I got really skinny. Uh, I'm going to make a future video on my kind of transformation and uh, you know my review of all the different diets that I've tried over the years. But, you know, just, just make sure you're getting enough protein. For me, myself, I like to make sure every single meal has got at least 50 grams of protein. Makes it nice and simple. How do you know whether you're getting enough protein or not? Well, that actually brings me into step number five, which is not tracking calories. Now, should you be tracking in the first place? Now, I've got a really easy way to answer whether you should be tracking your calories or not. And that is, are you happy with your current physique? Are you happy with your current body composition? If you are, then you don't need to track anything, just carry on doing what you're doing. But if you're not happy and you either want to build muscle, you want to lose fat, or you kind of just want to optimize how you feel or your physical performance, or you, you kind of want to make some kind of improvements, you should be tracking your calories, okay? And it doesn't have to take up loads of time. I actually made a video on how to track um, tracking calories and macros the easy way. If you're not tracking, okay, you're just guessing. You're just guessing what you're eating. And I guarantee you, you, your estimates are way off, okay? So I would definitely recommend, if you have some kind of goal that you're working towards, you're trying to like change your physique from where you're at right now to where you want to be, start tracking your calories and macros. It will be eye-opening because you, it will actually, that will just influence your decisions that you make on a daily basis once you start tracking your calories. Okay, if it's not measured, it cannot be managed, right? Step number five is not tracking. Step number six, okay? <clears throat> now, when I was younger, I used to call myself a hard gainer. I used to believe, right? It was hard for me to build muscle. I never imagined I would look like how I look right now, okay? But back when I was, you know, first getting into this, it was really hard for me to, uh, to build muscle. So you know what I did? I just used to eat and eat and eat and eat and eat. I just used to over consume calories because I just thought, oh, if I'm not gaining weight, it's because I'm not eating enough and I just need to eat more. And I see this mistake that people make when they're doing like a big bulk, right? <laughs> and they're just eating and eating and eating. But if your goal is to get in the best shape of your life and it's to have like a lean body composition, okay, then you do, you're actually just creating more work for yourself because you can only gain muscle at a certain rate, okay? And the whole goal of a bulk or a gaining phase is to gain as much muscle as possible without gaining, ideally, without gaining any fat at all. But to be honest, uh, everyone's gonna end up gaining a little bit of fat, but it's like, how can we minimize the fat, ac fat accumulation as much as possible whilst maximizing the amount of muscle that you can build, okay? Now, if your protein's high enough and you, you've got an adequate stimulus, which is your training, okay, and you get enough sleep and recovery, then you will, you will build muscle but you can only build muscle at a certain rate. And you know, obviously you can take supplements and steroids and stuff like that to speed it up, but you can only really gain muscle at a certain point. So if you're like over consuming calories, um, all that's gonna happen is you're just gonna get fat or you, you're just gonna get, you, you're gonna accumulate uh, fat storage and you're just gonna create more work for yourself when you need to cut, okay? So I would, be very careful like if you're in a bulking phase right now don't over consume your calories you can actually work out uh, you know how many calories uh, surplus you need to be in anywhere from 300 to 500 I made previous videos on that you can go check them out on my channel and finally step not a uh, top the step what am I talking about mistake number seven is when it comes to cutting, okay, now this is something that uh, 
I just ran myself into the ground with, okay, so when you're trying to cut weight, like when, I, when I used to try and cut weight, I used to be like, all right, okay, I'm cutting now. I'll just drop my calories to like, like, like to say if I was eating at like 3,000 calories, I would just drop it down to like 2,000 or 2,200, just immediately, just like that. And I mean, for the first few weeks, I would obviously, you know, lose a lot of fat. But what happens is, you just reach a plateau and then you're stuck. And then now I can't reduce my calories anymore because I just feel like crap, okay? So the whole goal when it comes to cutting is you wanna reduce your calories by as little as possible while still losing fat, okay? Like, can you keep your calories as high as possible and still lose fat? That is the whole goal of cutting is because if you drop your calories too quickly, you're gonna run yourself into the ground, you're gonna feel like uh, shit, you're gonna lose muscle mass and you're gonna plateau very quick and then then you're kind of stuck with uh, you know what you can do. So beware of dropping your calories too quickly. You, you wanna do this as slow as possible. The slower you lose the fat, the easier the whole process is gonna be and uh, the better you're gonna feel and the, the, the less likely you are to plateau, okay? And when you do plateau, there's things you can do like refeeds uh, <clears throat> and just taking a break and going back to maintenance for a while before dropping your calories again. <clears throat> that's something that I would recommend. But yeah, that's it guys. That is the top seven biggest nutrition mistakes that I see people make. And the overall goal with all of this is look, I'm, I'm not expecting perfection, okay? I've got, I've, I, I understand, we've got lives to live, things happen, social events, etc. You don't need to be perfect. If you mess up, don't just like what I used to do is I just used to kind of like, oh, I've messed up. That means I'm just gonna go all out and just anything's on the cards, okay? If you mess up, just get back on track. And if you do 80% right, 80% or 90% right, for a long term for a long time if you do it for like one year for example you get 80 and 90 percent right you'll literally be a different person okay so that's it if you want some help with this and you want to start looking and feeling better than ever before uh we can i can work with you one-on-one -on -one to evaluate your training your nutrition and get everything optimized so you just uh you know in the best shape of your life physically and mentally you can head to jamesweetland.com for coaching i've also got a course launching soon which is around nutrition and health optimization training uh, mindset and just overall just trying to live uh, a healthy productive life the link will be in the description and other than that guys thank you so much for watching and i'll talk to you soon